Hello students, the goal of this video is to uh, provide an overview of Tinkercad and how we could use this software to design our own keyring or bag tag and then 3D print that design uh, for you to use. Uh, so this is the Tinkercad workspace here. Uh, this is called the work plane here. We will always do the designing. Uh, over here is the navigation section. So you need to use these tools over here to move around the screen. And probably the navigation box here is the most important one to know. Over here we have all the different shapes that we can use to build your design. We have some other functions up here that I'll go through earlier, but here we also have the name. So make sure you put your name uh, up there early, uh, especially when you're 3D printing a whole class of key rings, it's good to know which one is which. Okay, so today I've got a couple of different designs here, but I'm gonna go through how to make this basic shape here. And if you can master that, you might be able to move on to something more complicated like this design here. But before we start any design, we should have sketched it out first so we know exactly what we want. So here's my sketch here, uh, done on um, graph paper. And this is 10 millimeter graph paper. So each box equals is 10 millimeters that way and 10 millimeters that way or one centimeter. And so from that, I can count up how big my design is. So one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter. I know it's three centimeters wide and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven centimeters across. So three centimeters by seven centimeters. We need to know that for when we start in our Tinkercad design. Okay, to start any shape, it's just a matter of moving one of these shapes onto the work plane. So I'm wanting to create this base shape here so I'm just going to grab the box and bring it out and it's as simple as that. But you can see it's not quite the right shape, is it? So remembering those uh, measurements that I took before, I'm going to click on these white boxes here and you have them will do and I'm going to start typing in those measurements. So this is in millimeters, so it was three centimeters, so that's going to be 30 millimeters. And this one here was seven centimeters, so that's going to be 70 millimeters. And you can see I'm starting to create my shape there. I'm just scroll, uh, zooming in and out with the, with the mouse. I'm gonna move this across a bit. Okay, this one here is a lot shorter. That was only one centimeter or 10 millimeters high. So to change the height, it's not gonna be here. It's going to be that box there. So if I click on there, and I'm gonna change that. To 10 or 1 centimeter. There we go, we're starting to create our shape. Now not only can we create shapes, we can create holes as well. And we're going to do this with this function here. So you can see I have a cylinder here and this cylinder has got these stripes through here. That means it's going to be a hole. So again, it's just a matter of dragging it out. And this time I want to get it going to move my view from to the top so I can see exactly where it is. Sometimes it helps to take off the perspective view there. And I still, 20 by 20, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna use the arrow keys to nudge him in the place. So you can drag it with your mouse, but I'm just using the arrow keys. So that was a hole, but it doesn't really look like a hole at the moment. What we need to do is we need to use what's called the group feature. So I'm going to click select both. I did that by putting my finger on shift and selecting both features and now see the group function is now available. So if I group those two together it means they're going to merge together but because one is a hole let's have a look what happens. And there we go we have our hole. Now I'm about to do my text in here but you can see the text is recessed in it's, uh, it's level with the top face of the design. And I did that first by subtracting that rectangle there. So I'm gonna bring this shape across. 
and I'm gonna create that rectangle there. Again, I'll go to my top view, because I find it a lot easier to work in this space. Now, I click the, and I might increase this one. Let's try, and just experiment, let's try 50 millimeters. And that's probably going to be too long. So again, you can change things anytime you want. Now click there, I might try 35. I wonder if I go 40. Perfect. And that's 20, and I think that's pretty good because it lines up to the same size of the hole. So, again, I'll just use my arrow keys to nudge that into place. I'm going to use my navigation box to change the view. Ah, now, how deep is that going? So, let's... Now, I probably don't want this hole to go all the way through. So again, I'm going to just, I'm just going to shift it up and to shift it up rather than click that one there, I'm going to click that cone there and I can see that's about where I want it. Okay, so remember that feature again was to group. So I select both with the shift key and then group. And now I've got that rectangle you saw there ready to go for my text. If you make a mistake, don't worry, you can select your feature and then the ungroup will come up. So if I hit ungroup, you can see that that one will come back just in case you made a mistake, but I was happy with it. So I'm going to group that again. Okay, we're nearly finished. Didn't take long at all, did it? Now I'm going to find uh, a tool to do the writing. So that's just called text. And I'm going to bring that out like I always do. And it's not quite going the right way, is it? We can change the angle. So we want this to move 90 degrees. Yep, that's looking pretty good. And we don't want the word text either. I had the word hawk. So in the box here, I'm just going to change that to hawk. Uh, now, if you remember, this whole recess here, this rectangle, was 40 millimeters by 20. So if I just select here, I can change the height of the text to 20 and the length of the text to 40. And I know that that's going to fit in just perfectly. Now, I like to go to my top view and I can just nudge him into place perfectly. But she's still not quite connected. That last step I'll have to do is the group. Okay, there we go. That didn't take long at all. And we've got our bag tag done. There's just one last step you do. This is all ready to go, but to send it to the 3D printer, we need to export it. So I'm going to select the file I want to export, and I'm going to hit Download for 3D Printing under the Export. So I hit Export. Uh, and there's some different um, file types that you can save. I'm going to save the .stl. Uh, and that's the file type we're going to use to print. So just hit that and that will save and you can give that to your teacher for 3D printing. Okay, so that was a very quick overview of Tinkercad. We used the navigation tools over here to move around the screen. We used the shape bar over here, including solid shapes and uh, holes. And the other one we used was... Oops was the group tool, and you can also use the ungroup tool. Okay, thank you very much, and good luck on Tinkercad.